Welcome to Spiritual Realities Podcast with your host, Dana Emanuel. Have you ever fallen prey to the most successful and cunning card artist ever to live? Ever become fascinated by the paranormal or become involved in the new age, witchcraft, or the occult? Come listen to the testimonials of people who have discovered the deceptions behind these things, have since come out of it all, and have been set free by Jesus. Welcome, everybody, to Spiritual Realities Podcast. I'm your host, Dana Emanuel, and today we have a very interesting guest on. His name is Donnie Jackson, and he's a book author. He wrote the book called When Dark Paths Meet. A uh, very good book. Um, it's about his testimony as an ex spiritualist, and Donnie is going to share his testimony with us today. So, Donnie, I'm going to go ahead and let you introduce yourself and let everybody know where you're from. And Okay. Uh, of course, uh, Donnie Jackson, and uh, I've been married now for 42 years. Uh, we have six wonderful boys, uh, ranging from 37 down to almost 18 years of age. And uh, each one of them know the Lord, and uh, my wife knows the Lord, and I know the Lord. Uh, but my story of getting to the Lord uh, was an interesting one. <laughs> I'll just kind of start. Uh, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, Donnie, uh, he was an ex-spiritualist. And uh, a lot of people know that there's like a difference between a spiritualist and a spiritist. And I guess a spiritist is one that's into the spiritist religion, where Donnie was more or less a spiritualist. But I asked Donnie before uh, I started recording about, you know, was he ever into one of the churches? And he was telling me his experience here. I'm going to go ahead and let him talk about that. Oh, yeah. Uh, now, I attended a, uh, a, a wonderful, fundamental Bible-believing church. Um, but I was um, under the impression of having like a guardian angel. And a sister, one of my sisters, um, and I were curious as to what guardian angel did we have? What was her guardian angel? What was my guardian angel? And so we went to one of these churches, nice place, um, quiet. And while there, um, one of the pastors uh, took me aside and uh, another pastor took my sister aside to another room. And uh, so they decided to just um, just tap into the spirit world to find out, you know, if I was an old soul, you know. And during the process, while they're going through this, uh, he, you know, the man told me, he says, you know, I have a gift of persuasion. I have a gift of uh, calming a storm whenever there's arguments. Uh, I bring peace, you know, all these wonderful, you know, these things. And uh, that uh, I had... Uh, an ability to see <laughs> evil in men, that I, I could see their bad intent. But he also mm -hmm. said, uh, he gave me the name. He says, uh, you, you, you've, um, you have a young soul, but you are being guided by an old soul. But you have a guardian angel. And the name of your guardian angel is Morning Star. Morning Star. Wow, that wow. sounds like a great name. Not knowing what <laughs> Morning Star was. Like Morning Star. Oh my goodness! Wow, and the truth right there in your face, <laughs> right. and didn't even realize it. Yeah, I was. I was. That's how deceived I was. I thought because I, I thought, oh, how special am I that I have a I have a guardian angel named Morning Star. That's cool. Wow, you know? isn't that something? Yes. Oh I, my but goodness. The interesting thing is, is afterwards when I was talking to my sister. Uh, she said that uh, that she was told that she um, had uh, a way of uh, being able to uh, attract men, that uh, men were attracted to her, and that uh, she had a, uh, a a wonderful, powerful angel watching over her, and his name was Morning Star. And when what? she told me that, I looked at her and I said, "You're kidding me! Your your angel, your guarding angel's name Morningstar." And she said, "Yes." I said, "That's the name of mine." 
my my now that's book, weird oh man I, I relate that in the book it, it's it, i was uh let's see if i remember right i think i was just getting ready to go into senior year in high school uh, when that took place and yeah, wow uh, i should have i should ask you how it got started your life into into spiritualism oh and yeah. so yes if you don't mind i'm sorry about no that, problem but, yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um I can I can talk about it this way in in a, in, a, in a way because I've been saved out of it for forty years, which is great. Yes, which but, is wonderful. Yeah. So, but uh, what what really kind of started this whole thing is that my grandfather, my grandfather was a, a spiritist, and he actually had a church called a Circle of Circle of Lights, is what it was called. But he would do seances and he would channel spirits through him. And uh, he had this belief that uh, the soul stays here on the earth and guides the descendants. And uh, my mother, she was a just a born again child of God, loved Jesus. She got saved uh, in, at the age of 12 uh, at, a, at a revival. And uh, so she had great disagreements with him. And in fact, they were sort of estranged to each other. When she got older and left, uh, they didn't really see eye to eye but he told her he says i'm going to show you that that i that um the spirit stays on the earth because i'm going to come back and visit your children and she, she was upset about it. she says no you <clears throat> will not do that well as it turned out um she did he he <laughs> the uh after he died he died at the time that i that my wife that my mother was pregnant with me so I never oh. met him. Oh, so he, okay. Yeah, he uh, he died in March. I was born in October of 1958, and uh, he my sister did have dreams. I had uh, three, uh, four older sisters, and uh, the two oldest ones did have dreams about him appearing. Oh and wow! It upset my mother about it. <clears throat> in fact, upset her enough. She she threw she pretty much threw away all the pictures of him she didn't want any pictures of him in the house you know none and yeah. uh, but she did uh, i guess evidently mm -hmm. keep one but she just kept it in her chest of drawers in her own private area but she never had him out yeah well as it turns out um uh, at the just the summer before i went to sixth grade i was in texas and i found out from my cousins that my aunt had been visited by um, my grandfather and that he appeared to her several times and had given her gifts, you know, spiritual gifts and the ability to have some clairvoyance, you know, abilities and, and, and stuff. And I thought that, well, that was really cool. I wish I would have my grandfather visit me, you know, but that'd oh. be something. I really, that would Very be intriguing, isn't it? Yeah, it yeah. is when you're, you know, when you get wow. into this, you know, how come I don't have grandpa visit me? And Sure enough, I had this dream. Uh, oh. This man appeared to me, and he came close, and I felt at peace. I didn't know what it was, and then um, he came, he called me by name, and uh, it was during this time I was having a, a bad time in my life because one of my sisters was going through a um, bad relationship with her boyfriend. He was very abusive, and uh, I, there was nothing I could do about it. I felt very young and frail at the time because there's nine years difference between me and my next sister and i remember in my dream telling him i said why do why why is it that men have to be so mean to their girlfriends you know why, why can't they change and this person in my dream says you want me to help you I'll, I'll be there for you if you want me to help you well i woke up and i was really troubled by the dream i didn't know who this person was as you know yeah. never seen this person before and so I'm sitting at the kitchen table and I asked my mother, I said, yeah, I had a strange dream last night. And uh, I told her what happened. And she had this concerned look on her face. And she goes, what did he look like? And I started describing this person, what he was wearing, everything. I said, you know, he had this light mustache. He had this, this, you know, had a nice uh, shirt on and everything and she got up from her chair and she walked away and I didn't know where she was going well she went to the uh, dresser drawer pulled out this picture and she goes is this the man I go oh, that's him that's that's exactly that's exactly the oh, person wow. she goes 
that <clears throat> that is your grandfather. And I go, okay. what? And, uh, and, and she started to walk away. And she told me later when I'm, I'm writing this book, she says, when she walked away, she went back yeah. to the dresser and she couldn't understand how this man could have possibly appeared to me and how I could have possibly known what he looked like when I'd mm. never seen him ever. And she just took it to the Lord says, I know it's not him. It's not him. Yeah. But, yeah. But Lord, you're going to have to do something to keep my son from, from getting, getting involved. Well, meanwhile, I'm back at the kitchen table. Yeah. You know, and I'm going, grandpa, that was you. Yes, please be a part of my life and help me. Well, I yeah. talk about opening the door, you know, Ooh. so that changed everything. <clears throat> yeah. Now, yeah. Let me tell you though, what the Lord, it's almost like a chess battle. It was, I think, the following week in that I had a visit by these two guys from a local church. They were doing this uh, uh, visitation around the, the neighborhood. It says, hey, you know, you can come to our church. You know, we'll send a bus by. And I went to my mom and I said, hey, there's this church called Berean Bible Church. You know, they, they, they're they asking me if I wanted to go. She goes, well, what do you think? I said, yeah, I'll go. She says, well, do it. And so I started going to church, a regular church, a, 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 a Bible fundamental preaching church. So here I am getting this at church, but I'm being fed by this spirit. <laughs> yeah, spirit. right. And <clears throat> at the same time, one of my other sisters, she is, uh, because of some of the things that she'd gone through uh, being abused, um, uh she she was my sister by way of uh the fact that she came from my father she was my father's child you know my, my father who who he adopted me so we're not blood yeah. kin so you know but she's still my legal sister yeah she was abused when she was really young by uh, her step grandfather and she stumbled upon the satanic bible and she started reading that and started learning about curses and spells oh, no. to, to go into witchcraft. So she was um, was getting into that. Meanwhile, I'm over here doing this with spirit Ooh, wow. and, and spiritualism and yeah. not knowing that what's going on is that I'm walking this dark path of spiritualism and she's walking this dark path of, of witchcraft. And she would burn candles and all to control men in her lives. And and, oh, and wow. had, she, literally she had women coming up to her, asking her to cast a spell on their boyfriends or husbands because they were having other affairs and stuff like that. And so she was, you know, causing problems with other guys, you know. Oh, you know, wow. She, you know, just, just. Uh, she was thing. actually being a practicing witch, wasn't she? I mean, really? Yes, a practicing witch. Oh, well, she didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what she was doing because, you know, we didn't live next to each other. And yeah. it, the, how it worked out, my sister wanted to go to, to my real mother and, and, and tell her about this wonderful gift she has of being able to use witchcraft against men that are, are that were terrible. And my mom says, oh, I don't want anything to do with that. My father was involved in this stuff with spiritism and stuff like that. And I didn't want anything to do with it. You know, I said, I just want to, you know, Jesus is, is, is who I've got. And then she mentioned that, you know, um, you know, my, Donnie, he, he, he ended up seeing his grandfather in, in his dream. And I don't know how he did that. But, you know, I, I don't want any part of it. Well, she heard that. She goes, Donnie had, he saw his grandfather. Oh. Maybe he's got gifts that I could use. And so she started oh. grooming me to find out what I could do. Now, she's, again, she's about eight, nine years older than me. So here I am at this time, 13 years old, and she's like 21, 22 that she would test me in different things. I remember one time she took me to a, um, to a park, I mean, to a, a fall festival, and she deliberately sent a spell to this guy that, you know, a, a, of a lustful feel. And he started following her throughout the park, but at a distance, and he had his girlfriend with her, you know, total strangers, but 
everywhere we went, they were following. She did this to see if I would pick up on it because she wanted to find out if I had an awareness of what oh. was going on. And I sure enough, I thought that we're being followed. And I looked back and I saw this guy. And then I looked at him and I'm thinking, what are you thinking? And all of a sudden it hit me. And I tapped my sister on the shoulder. And she goes, what? And I go, see that guy over there? She goes, don't point. Yeah. I said, he likes you. He thinks she, she he thinks you're very pretty. Well, that just that settled it for her. She knew that I yeah. had I had these gifts. And so she then came to me and she says, I want to teach you how to cast these spells because I think God has given you a gift to help women who are in a, an abusive situation to get out of it. Well, that intrigued me because I saw my, my other sisters being abused by these men. If I could stop oh. other men from doing this, I'm doing a good thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Isn't that something how Satan does that? I'm a good witch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? And so that began the change. And for, for years, she and I worked together pretty much, you know, helping women get rid of their mm -hmm. boyfriends or change their minds. But then it went from that to where she actually lured men to her and she would make have them spend money on her and then dump them and get rid of them. And we would oh, burn candles goodness. and laugh about it because they would, you know, fall victim to what she was doing. And uh, we even we even we even actually turned a um, a pastor and uh, this the, uh, uh, this preacher he used to go to a, a bar and he would try to witness to uh, some of the patrons there. And my sister said, I'm going to win him. I'm going to I'm going to win him over. And sure enough, over about a two month period, she would go there on the weekends. And sure enough, he ended up sleeping with her. Uh, yeah, and, but it. I had gotten so deep into that that I yeah. thought it was funny. Um, yeah. Huh? No, other circumstances came. Uh, I remember it came to a peak when um, I began working with, I don't know if any, anybody's heard this, of uh, lifting tables. Doing I tables. did that. It was, it was. It was something else yeah. because that yeah, stuff yeah. really happens well, and it's see, so intriguing when you're it into is. it. It's, it was something well, else. For me, it's really funny. Even through, even through all the things that I went through burning the candles and stuff, I remember yeah. the first time, the first time ever burning the candles to get into yeah. the head of a man to do this. My sister had me do this our first session. And we sat across from each other. We didn't hold hands. We just sat across from each other and just closed our eyes, had these red candles going, and I'll never forget it. I'm looking at the candles because even that at the age of 14, I'm looking at these candles and I'm like, is this for real? You know, is this for real? Uh, and then the candles flickered. Well, there was no fan or anything. Uh -huh. like, yes. yes. And then I closed my eyes and I felt this strange inner chill you know, goosebumps on the inside, <laughs> you know, if you want to, yeah. you know, and I go, what was that? And then suddenly I, I'm seeing this man sitting in this brown chair at, looking at something. And I turn in this vision, I turn and I see he's watching something on TV and I see this olive colored phone, you know, off to the side of a, on a counter. And I'm like, what's going on? And 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 then I remember the instructions is that my, my sister says, I want you, I want you to concentrate on Gene, I think is what she called him, and have him call me. And so I I whispered, call Rose, call, call her, call her. And suddenly I see him get up. And all of a sudden I shake and I open my eyes and I look at her, I look at my sister across from me. And she's smiling. She goes, oh, you're good. I go, what do you mean? She goes, I saw you looking at him. I go, you saw me looking at who? You were looking at Gene. I go, I was. how do you know I'm looking at Gene? She goes, I watched you. She says, I watched you look at Gene. She says, I watched you look over at the TV. She says, I watched you see off to the side the telephone. She says, and I saw you go over to and whisper in his ear. 
Oh I'm my just, goodness. And I'm thinking, and I said, well, do you think it'll work? Do you think it worked? And about that time the phone rang and it was him. Now a 14 year old kid doing something like that. Yeah. You think, yeah. That, you think that hooked me that I'm like, yeah. No, I got, I I can, look what I can do, you know? And yeah. so I was in, I was all hook, line, singer. Wow. You got this. And my confidence grew. I was able, I, I felt, I didn't feel uh, um, small. I mean, and I was, I mean, when I entered yeah, high yeah. school, I was four foot 11 and weighed 81 pounds, but <laughs> I wasn't afraid of anything. I, 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 had, yeah. I had somebody with me, you know? Yes. And uh, so. That, and you actually get friends too that way. Oh, when you yeah. tell it's, them, they just. They just think that's I the coolest did. thing ever. Yeah. And you also actually feel feel Empowered. special. You know what special. I mean? Yeah. Yes. I felt special. Like you've got this gift, you know, yes. and you can do this thing and uh, people yeah. come to you, you know, well, right. hey, do you think you could contact so-and-so or do you think you could do this favor for me? Yes. Yep. No, we I, always my had sister that told me this. I was afraid when I was going into high school, I go, I go, Joy, I go, I go my, 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 look at me. I'm so small. They're going to pick on me. She goes, no, they won't. I go, what do you mean they won't? She goes, I, she goes. You have a lot going for you now that you can do this. You got. You've got. Th you got. How did she say it? You got people watching over you. They're. They're going to make sure you're fine. You're going to have a lot of friends. Lots of friends. Right aware <clears throat> of your surroundings. You're gonna. You. You'll yeah. be able to spot trouble before it gets to you. And I was oh, like, wow. oh, okay, well, this is great. You know. Yeah. But then, <laughs> in 1973. November 18th, 1973, I'm sitting in that Bible-believing church, hearing the Word of God, hearing the preaching. I have a friend of mine with me. He gets under conviction to go forward and pray to receive Christ. And since he went forward, I thought, well, maybe I ought to go forward, you know, because I'm going to, you know, see what's going on. So the guy, the, the counselor said, you know, it was giving him the the, the whole salvation, what I call spiel, but it's not a spiel. It, yes. But I'm thinking at this time, hey, what a great thing. Here, I have got this great gift that God has given me. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. Help, I'm helping these troubled uh, uh, women that are older than me, 9, 10, 15 years older than me. I'm helping them get out of bad situations, see how God's using me to get them out of bad situations by putting curses on their boyfriends. I can... I can also have Jesus die. That'd be double power. <laughs> so I take it on as like, like it's a like a like a trophy or something. Like a, this is more this is like a power ring, you know. Yeah. You know, I prayed the prayer, but I didn't receive him as Lord. You know. As yeah, the, you didn't Lord. do it for the right reasons. Your motive right. was not exactly. there. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking. Well, I'm well. Life is good, right? Well, yeah. about a week later, <laughs> this my grandfather appears to me in a dream and he comes forward with a saddened look on his face yeah. and i ask him in my vision i go what what's wrong and he goes why and he screams why did you do that and i do what what happened he goes we gave you so much why did you do that there's nothing i can do for you now I, there's nothing in which, by the way, I want to mention real quick that we know that wasn't your grandfather. Though. Of course, you know. it wasn't my right. grandfather. Right, yes, right, yes. My grandfather. Exactly. I'm going to say this right now. My grandfather never, ever, ever, ever appeared to me. That was right. Never him. That was a deceiving spirit, yes. emulating, imitating my grandfather. Yes, sir. Not yes. my grandpa. You know? <laughs> yeah. They can imitate anything they want. You know. And yes, so, I you know, he said, I did everything, you know, we did everything for any walks oh, away goodness. in my vision. And I'm, I'm like, what, what, what happened? Well, one by one, they started taking things away from me. See, all my confidence, everything that I built from the time that I got into this witchcraft, they built. They built my oh. confidence. They built my happiness. They built everything for yeah. me. But when yeah. I almost gave my life to Christ, they were going to give me a lesson. What's it like to be without all those powers? And mm. I can sense the loss. I tried to do my um, sessions with my sister. I couldn't make contact with anything. Nothing worked. I mean, I, yeah. I, I, nothing. Okay. And can I, I ask you? Yeah. Was you, was you doing what they call the meditation exercises, trying to connect? 
Yes. Yes. Okay, I yep. was wondering about yep. that. That's what it was, because okay. I, uh, I was told to you know, empty, empty my mind, empty my mind completely. Okay. And, um, and and the first, well, let me kind of backtrack a little bit. The my my sister gave me a picture of Jean. He says, and I said, "Who's this?" She says, "Well, this is Jean. This is who I want you to reach." You know, with this picture, which is interesting because if I really could have transported myself over to where Jean was and see these things and see him why did i need a picture to know what he looked like you know but yeah but, so that kind of i think looking back is like that was sort of something to give me an impression evidently but that's you know yeah. anyway all of that was gone and then one by one my confidence went away at this time oh. i had been writing songs for uh, our high school of 2500 students I, I was putting on shows. I was, I mean, you know, why wouldn't I yeah. be confident? But now suddenly I felt very small. I felt very mm. frail. I felt yeah. very vulnerable. And here's an interesting thing is that that was the first thing I felt. And honestly, I did not grow up in, an, in a wealthy home. We Most of the clothes I bought was from Goodwill or Salvation yeah. Army. And uh, we, I kind of joked that my shoes, I sometimes actually had to have them taped together with a little duct tape on the bottom and paint, paint, paint them black. But nobody cared. You know, the high school didn't look at you that way. None of the kids cared. They didn't make fun of me. But when I had all that confidence gone, I noticed it. And I just felt like, you know, I felt trash. I felt, you know, very down. Yeah. And then I started hearing things from students in my mind. I wasn't really saying anything, but I was hearing these things. You know, he looks like a girl. He he walks like a girl. He's got long hair like a girl. He he's very he's very frail. He doesn't have any muscles. He, he even his even his antics, even the way he moves his hands, every all the all the uh, the way he he his movements and stuff. He, he's very feminine, girlish. It's like I started feeling like I did. I was losing my manhood. I. I didn't feel like a yeah. man. It's like, what yeah. in the world's going on? You know, I'm 15 years old. Why is this happening to me? And I, um, I felt like everyone was looking down on me, or they were looking at me with accusations. But they weren't. This is the crazy thing. They were not. Yeah. It was building up, and then I started getting getting a cold, and so nobody hung around me for real because I had a cold that stayed with me for about a month. Mm -hmm. And finally, it was at the very end of my rope is in february this all began in in the latter part of december first part of january in which i went from a kid flying high you know down to the lowest low and felt like i was at the bottom of my world and and everything was taken away from me and then thoughts of suicide hit oh no and i never had that feeling before and i'm like you know the kids at school don't like me nobody likes me you know this whole you know down 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 and what what was your sister thinking at this time was she also no, acting funny it. towards you or anything weird thing is uh she told me she said she could sense that i'd lost my power and she sought her mentor uh and, uh she she asked her what do you think it is and her mentor said it exactly this he got too close to Jesus. What? That was her exact words. Wow. First she, so actually, for her first words, he got too much religion. He got too close to Jesus. Oh, and my he goodness. He should not have done that. And and uh, my sister says, well, what do I do? He said, She told her, just leave him alone. Let him flounder. They're going to teach him a lesson. And... They don't care about Buddha or Shiva. No, or Jesus. <laughs> it's always it Jesus, Jesus, isn't it? Boy, yeah. they don't like well, it. Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. yeah. And of course, that's a dead giveaway, me. isn't it? Yes. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Of course, my sister didn't tell me this. You know, she just stayed away, <laughs> you know, and, and let me do this floundering for two months. And then it finally came to, well, during these times, I, I became a not not during the time of my depression, but first time I started down this dark path with my grandfather, grandfather, I began having chronic sleepwalking. I slept walk all over the place. Um, I mean, 
some of it was pretty comical. Did uh, you? Wow. Oh, I, I one time I slammed open the bedroom door of my mom and dad and yelled out, where's the dance? <laughs> you know, oh, my goodness. And came running off and, and then went back to bed. You know, my, my dad had to tell me about it. But I was a chronic sleepwalker. Well, anyway, oh, uh, it was a February, February around 2.30 in the morning. I'm walking down the street of my house in my pajamas, barefoot. It's about 20 degrees outside. It's February. And I'm walking toward the main road at the end of my block. And I'm very depressed. And this voice is telling me, you know, nobody at school likes you. No one wants to be around you. Oh. This world does, is not good enough for you. Jesus wants you to come home. Jesus wants you to come home. And I get to the edge of, this, of the block. And the voice says, all you have to do is step out into the road. No one will see you in time. And you can be with Jesus. And I go, all right, I'm Jesus, I'm coming to you. And I stepped out onto the highway. And I'm standing there. And then not a single vehicle went by. Nothing. Oh. I stood there, stood there, nothing. And then I walked back, got up onto the curb, and a truck went by. And then uh, suddenly, my grandfather appears and says, if you want to, you can come with us, and we will help you, and we will, we will restore you, because God has given you a great gift. And I said, okay, I'll come back to you then. And my, the deal was I could go to church all I wanted to. I could learn all I wanted about Jesus. But don't get too close to him. And so I said, okay. And so when I said, okay, and the truck went by, I closed my eyes. And when I opened my eyes, I was not out in the street. I was in the living room with my hand on the, on the front room doorknob. What? And I'm like, was I outside? What I did I actually go down the street? I don't remember coming back. Oh wow. And so looking back and, and, and going through this, I realized what happened. I never left the house. They gave me the whole thing in my head that I went yes. down the street and tried to step out there they did it all in my mind oh my goodness it was so real but i never did go outside and i sat down on the bed and i went why in the world was i contemplating suicide that is so stupid yeah and you know that's so crazy because like with alien abduction cases and and a lot of other things uh -huh. they make you feel like you're there you're in the event you know exactly. and it's taking it's, place it's real but it's like it's all through the image. It's yeah. imagery that they they, gave, they put yeah. it in your mind. Right. And they, they play it the like a movie. Being, right. They give me the feeling of yep. being cold. The whole works. Yes, every bit of it. Every bit of it. So I, I've known of people that did astral traveling, you know, yeah, right. and and they I know one lady and what she did, she went and she I forget what all the details, but she went somewhere. And right. where she went, she went across a field of, of some kind of daisy flowers or something. Right. And when she come back and everything, she woke up. She There was a daisy flower in the bed with her. So that convinced her yes. that she was really traveling, you know, in the spiritual yeah. realm. Right. And all, but really what it was, was the enemy can also aport objects. They sure you know, can. can bring them in and, and yeah. move the objects that they it's nothing for him to bring a flower no. and put it in the bed with you, you know. Right. The, but they, a lot of people it it when they have the these experiences, they believe all of it. They don't yeah, believe that yeah. some of it's deception, you know, well, the, when they Yeah, well the I the yeah, and the irony is is that you know, I was always skeptical enough in my mind that even after that happened, I had my doubts that I had really gone down the street. Yeah. I thought, yeah, that was the most realistic dream I think I've ever had in my life, you know? Yeah. And, but it, but the ironic thing is, is when I accepted this spirit back into my life, my, my social life jumped right back up immediately. Mm. Everything was restored. My confidence was restored. It's as if nothing got left behind. The very next day, my sister comes by, picks me up, and she says, Hey, 
hey, bud, why don't we go down to the house and we'll go and burn some candles? She picked up as if nothing had ever happened. Wow. She knew that I was restored and I was able to immediately make contact with our subjects that we were doing. And yeah. so I was in even deeper. And it was during that time that I, I kind of grew and learned about table lifting and, and all these other things that I was involved with. And then uh, went to the Spiritist Church and 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 learned about who my you know my guardian yeah. angel is, which by the way was not my guardian angel, and 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 it made reasons why we had the same guardian angel because he's the one that helped our paths cross each other, our dark paths meet right there, you know. So we we did that, and um, I was on the way to just going deeper and deeper. And oh, wow. meanwhile, my mother. And my grandmother, for years, during this whole time, as prayer partners, prayed for me and against what was happening that I was involved with. They wanted me to... Oh, praise God, they did. Yeah, and and my mom even told me later when I was writing the book, she said she prayed to God. She says, no matter what it took, no matter what it took, I wanted you to get away from what you were doing and know who Jesus was. And uh, an event took place in my life that changed it. Uh, I nearly lost my mother. I mean, um, oh, she, wow. her, her liver really? totally degenerated. She was in the hospital for a couple of months. And it was during that time, ironically, that uh, my sister and I did not burn any candles. We didn't do any of those things. She wanted to leave me alone for a little bit because she knew I was worried about my mom. And I remember it's, it came to a point where, I, you know, how you make these deals. I said, God, if you, if you raise my mom back up, if you raise her back up, I will not burn candles with my sister again. I'll walk mm. over wow. And and that was the night before we were told that she would probably pass away the next day. Oh. And when I came home from school the next day, they were uh, the everyone in my family was ecstatic because they found out where the bleeding was, they stopped the bleeding, and she was going to recover completely. So she went from really? deathbed, yeah, from deathbed overnight to she was coming home in about three days. <laughs> oh goodness, praise God for that! <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow. And so I did everything I could to avoid. God certainly does work miracles. Yeah. You know, a lot of people yeah. think that He doesn't do that anymore. Oh yes, He does. Yeah, yeah. So he I, certainly I just does. Walk away from it, but yeah. what yeah. you don't you don't just walk away from that. You have to walk towards yeah. something. That's and, right. You know, and, and I didn't walk toward Christ. I just walked away from it. Yeah. And uh, but incidents kept coming up that would keep me doing other things. But I didn't burn candles with my sister until. Yeah. And this is one of those things where you go, well, I had good reason. <laughs> and yeah. Then she met this guy, who was crazy violent, and I actually had fear that she would, could be killed by this man the crazy man oh wow and uh, and but she said she wanted to do this because she considered him a challenge she was going to break him she was going to you know burn candles and break him you know oh boy. he's a beast of a guy big fellow uh, but i just thought this guy's dangerous i don't want to. and then sure enough because i wasn't helping my sister i ended up having a dream that she was being strangled to death by this man and and this uh, voice came that sounded like my grandfather. Who I, yeah. I've never heard him before, so but it sounded like how I guess he would sound like because it was the same voice that I always heard him speak of, this demon. Yeah. And he said, you're going to have to help your sister. You're going to have to burn candles, but burn candles against what she's wanting you to do. And I thought, well, that's okay. Well, that makes a difference. I'm going to burn candles to save my sister from this man. I started going over to my sister's house, and she would burn candles, wanting to get into his head to have him be with her. And I was getting into his head saying, you want to stay away. You want to oh, stay away. Oh, man. Is that and, something? Yeah. So here I am battling my sister without her knowing about it. Oh. Well, as it turns out, you know, and I'm not going to say this in a bragging way because I think it was all rigged and anyhow, um, I was winning. This guy was was actually not not doing what she wanted, and she couldn't yeah. figure out who was inter, in, interfering. Oh, and she Lord. called me up. She says, she says, Donnie, she says, it's time to get some hard work done. I go, what do you mean? She goes, somebody's working against us to keep 
you know, keep uh, him from, from wanting me. And she goes, and I've got something for this person. She, wow. says, get, she says, get your butt over here to my house. I said, okay, I will. So I walk, I walk into her house, you know, when I get there, we don't have red candles out. They're black. All these black candles are out. And oh. these, these black candles are, are used for destruction. Oh, the destruction of an enemy, <clears throat> you know, in Whoa. her work, work. And so I'm sitting there already nervous because I'm the one that's interfering. And she releases demons to go attack this person. Oh, who, no. This, <laughs> oh, no. It's not funny, <laughs> but I'm sitting there thinking, oh, my goodness. Are you kidding me? Here I oh am. Oh, my you know, goodness. I, here I am, 18 and years And you're sitting old. there thinking, oh, no, <laughs> I'm in oh, trouble well. now. <laughs> I'm holding her hand and she raises her hand. She goes, I command you now in the name of Lucifer to leave and to, to, to go do the bidding. And she brings her hands down and grabs mine. And she opened them, her eyes and she looked at me and she goes, oh, I haven't helped that person because they're in a heap of trouble now. And I'm sitting there and I look at her and I go, yeah, that person's going to be sorry. <laughs> Sure. And I never told her it was me, you know. Yes, and if you ever needed God, you needed him then. <laughs> <laughs> like, and oh, let me tell you, what, my, my world just God spun out you. of control. I mean, I would have been scared out of my mind. I was I, really. <laughs> I was. It, it was. It was. Talk uh, about a, being thrown into paranoia and everything yeah, else. You know, yes. thinking, oh, oh man. I had brake failures. I had my, I, I was trying to make a left-hand turn. And as I was turning left, my car died right there, just now in the oh, line of traffic and the semi coming. It finally Ooh. started just in time before the, it, before it would hit me. I had a brake <sighs> fail as I was coming to this major intersection and I went right through the red light between so she's cars. praying against you and your mom's praying for you oh, and yeah. praise oh. god he <laughs> was winning you know <laughs> it was crazy the brakes failed talk about a spiritual war <laughs> it was it was bad oh, it was bad man. you know and and it's to save your soul i tell yeah. you and save I, find, you. <laughs> I i'd gone to florida on a vacation and i got down here it was so peaceful and i i said okay i'm coming down here to live and so i i went back up home told my mom i said i'm moving to florida <laughs> and uh, so uh, I, we restarted preparing for that. That was in April and I was leaving in August. And um, so I get back up home because I'm just wanting to get away from Indiana now, get away from my other sister. Oh, I love her with all my heart, you know, <laughs> but and I had no I had no um, courage to tell her that it was me that was working against her. And, oh. and by the way, they ended up being together anyway, because. Did they all oh, know? I walked away. Yeah. <laughs> and and so uh, about three weeks before I leave, I'm lying in bed, sound asleep, and suddenly I am yanked out of my bed by my feet. I'm dragged to the house, out to the back door. The door swings open. I'm banging my head going down the back steps. What? And, and I'm being pulled by these creatures. And they have a rope, and they pull me up by the feet. And, they, and they're pulling me up over my, this tree that's in the backyard and holding it down. And they clamp my hands to this hook that's in the ground. And I'm clawing at it, trying to get it out. And I can't get the hook out. And they strip my clothes off in the, in, in the middle of, of all this. And they start hitting me with rods. And they sit, you know, and, and, and I'm, I'm screaming and writhing in pain. And the, the thing I'm thinking of is how come no one's hearing me scream? I don't understand. Oh my no one's hearing me. And I'm being beaten. And finally, they, uh, they're they saying, we own you. We own you. You belong to us. We own you. And uh, pretty soon, I get to the point where I'm no longer scared. I'm now defiant. And I said, you can hit me all you want. I don't care. Now I'm mad. I'm mad while, I, while they're hitting me. And the more yeah. they hit me, the more I laughed about it. And then finally, when I got to that point where I wasn't, I wasn't reacting to what they were hitting me, I was just laughing at them. They cut the rope and I felt my feet hit the hit the uh, dirt and then it started changing and I woke up in my bed. Oh, my wow. Bed. And and I'm I'm, <clears throat> I'm really sore and I'm like, what in the world? You know, and I, I'm achy. And uh, the next day uh, I'm, I'm up about and I'm not saying anything to my mom. I didn't tell her what was going on. And I go to take the trash out and I go out the back door 
And I'm still thinking to myself, that is the wildest dream that I've ever had, you know, yeah. over at that tree. And I thought, that, that was so real. And then I look at the base of the tree and I see the dirt and I pause and I walk over and I see claw marks. What? Of, of where somebody had clawed at the dirt, but I don't see the hole where a hook was, you know, because yeah. they had a hook that looked like it was spiked into the ground, but there was no hook. But there was like claw marks in that area. Oh, and I'm like, wow. what? And I look at my fingernails <clears throat> and they're black with dirt. And I'm, whoa. And I'm thinking, did I sleepwalk out here and claw at the dirt? And while clawing at the dirt, they built this scenario? Or did that really happen? Yeah. You know, and reasoning in my head. Because they can bring things into existence, you know, yes. like I said. Yeah, the dirt and, in your fingernails, and they can also, of course, move some, you know, the yes, dirt around. Right, exactly. I mean, they can make claw marks on people. So exactly, you know. And I'm thinking this. Wow. Yeah. So it had me puzzled, you know, because I, even through all of this, I kept trying to come up with reasons or you know yeah. explanations, but that that got me. I still didn't. I still knew deep in my mind that I was never really dragged out and done. It had to be a dream. But it was so realistic because I also knew that I slept walk quite a bit. And so that scenario was there. And I remember after that, I went over to my friend's house and we had gone out to get something to eat and it was getting dark. And he sees through the street lights as we go by, he, he sees marks on my arms like like uh, like uh, stripes. He goes, what would you do to yourself? I go wow there's marks on my arms and i knew they they matched the marks from when i was being beaten by these creatures oh wow. and I'm thinking, how did i self-inflict <clears throat> this there had to be a way yeah that i yeah. that i did this to myself there's no way these demons did that but something happened and when i got back to the house after being over at my friend's house i'm sitting in the car and i look at these marks and i'm mad and I hollered, I said, is this the best you got? Really, is this all you can do? Just frighten me in my dreams? You know, don't you understand? Yeah. I've got God on my side, you know? Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. You know? <laughs> and, 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 and you can't touch me. And so I get out of my car, slam my door, and I go up onto the porch, open the door, come walking in. My sister is sitting, uh, uh, one of my sisters, not the one that's in the witchcraft, but one of my sisters is sitting in the chair, beside uh, my uh, chest of drawers, I closed the door and right on that chest of drawers is my stereo system and these two large speakers up there on these on these racks. And I closed the door and I put my keys on, on the chest of drawers and I get ready to say something to mom and suddenly the speakers and they come flying off the wall and, and fly past me onto the couch. One lands right behind my sister who had just happened to lean forward to pick up a piece of paper that had fallen on the mm. on the floor. So it misses her, but it lands right in the seat that she, where she was at. And Whoa. the stereo lid comes off and hits me over the head and comes down. And I look, the shelves are still in place. Nothing is broken. The speakers come flying off the wall. Mm. And I'm like, what in the world, you know? And my mom said, I, my mom says, did you see that? And I said, see that? I said, I felt it, you know? And uh, I said, I think I made somebody mad. And my, my mom says, well, you should stop that, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, you know, even at that point, I was no longer scared. I was just still angry because, yeah. you, know, yeah. you know, and then I left. Everything it's been yeah, taken from you. And I, yeah. I left I left Indiana, came to Florida. And then uh, long story short, I, I married a beautiful young lady. Oh, that's wonderful. And, uh, but I was still having issues. Uh, yeah. You know, every time I got angry with anything, I'd have blackout moments. I would lose time. I, I would be, I wouldn't remember what happened and I'd uh -oh. open my eyes and, you know, there'd either be holes in the wall for me punching it or uh -oh, things that's would be broken, good. you know, just really bad things. And uh, I was usually by myself when this happened. But this one night, uh, it was a Thursday night, in, in fact, um, my wife and I were just being playful. We hadn't even been married a year and we were chasing each other through the house and everything. And, uh, we, we were being kids cause we were kids anyway. I'm, 
I'm, you know, 22, 23, 23 years old and she's, you know, 18, 19 and uh, only been married of just a few months. And I, we were playing tag <laughs> and uh, I tagged her. And so she was it and I'm running and running, running, running. And I run into the bathroom and she, um, she ends up uh, slamming the door against my hand. And when she did that, I saw this flash in my head. And then suddenly I see myself standing in that bathroom with the toilet uh, back end of the toilet uh, lid in my hand, ready to throw it against the wall. And towel bars are torn down. Things are you know, just messed up in the bathroom. And I'm Whoa. like, what happened? And I put the lid back down and I go walking out trying to find my wife and I can't find her. I find her in our bedroom and she's leaning up against the wall, pressed up against the wall in a sort of a sit up fetal position. And she's nervously crying. And I walk up to her and I said, what happened? And she, she didn't look at me and she said there was more than one. And I, more than, more than one what, you know, and I'm really, you know, and I'm beginning to kind of tear up because I, last thing I ever wanted to do is to see her hurt. And she goes, you were screaming in the bathroom, but there were other voices in there. Oh, and I was going to say, that sounds like demonic possession. Yeah. When you said the blackouts and everything, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. And, and I'm, wow. I, you know, so I evidently had been experiencing that. And um, mm. I, I looked at her and I said, what's, what's wrong with me? She goes, I don't know, but you need spiritual help. I go, I don't know who to tell. Everyone would think I'm just crazy. She yeah. goes, maybe we ought to tell the pastor. I go, I, so I don't know what to say to the pastor. And she goes, well, maybe, maybe something, maybe we can talk to him this Sunday. Well, that particular Sunday, it was unannounced. We get there and there's a guest preacher, a guest from Oklahoma. Yeah. And his whole, he's a, a person who knows deeply well about spiritual warfare. Okay. So yeah. He's talking and he says, he says, ladies and gentlemen, he said, I want you to come back tonight for the sermon that I want to preach. He said, I'm not going to tell you the topic because if I tell you what it is, some of you will not be here. He says, and it won't be because you won't want to be here. It's because you won't be able to make it here. The enemy will not want you to be here tonight. So I'm not going to tell you what it is. Just come back. And I'm like, wow, that's intriguing. But we got back that night and he says, now I'm going to tell you what the subject is. The dangers of witchcraft and oh. what it could do to you. And he started preaching on that. And he hit just about everything that I had experienced. Oh my goodness. And I and I I'm just like, what in the world? Now at the same time I'm intrigued, I'm also terrified and nervous because there's something within me that doesn't want to be there now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, right. I, I do not want to be there. At all. Yeah. And you don't understand why, do you? Why? I had that where I was like, why do I not want to be here? Yeah. And I'm yet, wanting to be here, yes. you know, but I felt like I needed to run out of the church. Yeah, there's two of me. I want to yes. be here. No, yes. I, be here. I no, felt like that. Yeah. And and yep. so I'm feeling impressed to go see this man after the service. But I I I told my, my wife, I said, I I maybe sometime later. So we're starting to walk out. Well, the line is backed up to walk out because our pastor is shaking hands with everyone as they walk out and the line's not moving. And and then the pastor leaves the line and goes up on the stage, starts talking with uh, the guest pastor. And finally, it's as if something just forced me. I said, I got to go talk to him. And I just left. And my wife followed followed down and I walked up on stage and I waited my turn. And I'm, my hands are sweating. And I, oh my God. I turned to him and said, I want to tell you, I'm going to thank you for coming. It meant a lot to me. And he goes, thank you, son. And I stopped and thought to myself, that is so stupid. That's not what I wanted to say. And finally, I just said, I want to serve Jesus. I want to love him, but I can't. And he, he paused for a minute. He goes, why do you say that? And I said, well, my sister has thrown a curse on me. And he pulled his hand back from shaking my hand. He goes, he, she did what? And I said, yes, she doesn't know it. And I told him real quickly what I'd been involved with. And he then he said this just plainly. He says, I have to ask you this. I go, okay, do you want 
my help. Are you allowing me to help you? I said, yes, I want help. He goes, okay, in the name of Jesus Christ, right now I bind every demon that's in, on, and around you. And he goes, how do you feel? And when he said that to me, I saw the red flash. I waited for the blackout, but nothing happened. And I stood there and I said, I want to hit you so badly, but I can't move my arms. I said, what is wrong with me? He says, you've got demons that are that are hindering your growth, hindering you. He said, we need to we need to get rid of those. Do you, you know? And so we set up a time for me to meet with our pastor because here's one part that was missed. It was assumed that I was a child of God that had gotten messed up in yeah. what I was doing. They didn't know that I only knew who Jesus was. I hadn't accepted him as Christ. So, you know, so yeah. I had to wait from Sunday to Wednesday. <laughs> I had three oh, days wow. before I could wow. meet with my pastor and have this taken care of. And so that was the, the longest three days I think I've been through. Oh, I bet. But on the day that I was to meet with him that night, every the day was the most perfect day ever. Nothing went wrong. And I get home and I tell my wife, I go, Janet, I, th I think they're gone. I think the demons are gone. She goes, no, we're going to go see the pastor. I go, no, you don't understand. I said, everything has stopped. I said, we're, we're fine. I said, I've never felt so free. She goes, no. She goes, you know, they're tricking. I go, I go no, oh, yes. Everything is good. She goes, well, fantastic. Let's go to church tonight and tell the pastor. And I said, no. And I went, huh. Why did I react that way? <laughs> Why did I suddenly blurt out no? She goes, she looked at me and she held my hand and she looked deep, in, deep into my eyes. And she goes, they're not gone, are they? I go, no, I guess not. And so we went to church that night and Good. we walked into his room. That room has been prayed over or something because I felt like they were being raked off of me as I walked into his room. And one by one, I started renouncing everything I was involved with. Get rid of this. I'm sorry, I went to the Ouija board. Sorry, it's table lifting. Sorry, I was in witchcraft. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. And at the end of it, uh, you know, he he, you know, cast away any other demonic forces with me, and he says, "Is Jesus Lord of your life?" I said, I said, Pastor, Jesus Christ is my Savior and my Lord, and and I proclaimed it. And that night, my life was changed. Wow, that's and, awesome! Yeah, praise and God for that. That was in that was in uh, February of eighty two. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so but it goes to show, doesn't doesn't it? Where a person can go to church. You know, I went to church when I was younger, all the way up. I mean, I never stopped going. Really, I yeah. mean, here and there, very small periods of time, right. but. I was in church the whole time I was in the occult, but you know what? I wasn't reading my Bible. Yes. And yeah. I also never heard in church about don't talk to the dead. I mean, I did, I did hear when you die, you go to either heaven or hell. Right. I heard yeah. that. Yeah. But I kept it. thinking, well, maybe there's some errors in the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, that, know. I was going to ask you that. What did you, did you hear things in church that conflicted with what you were experiencing while you was in this in spiritualism? The one thing that I kept fighting against that I yeah. argued was that those who proclaimed to be clairvoyant and could see the future or did uh, things where they um, would, they never really talked about talking to the, but being spiritualist. They said that was actually the root of evil. That was bad. You know, that was demonic. Yeah. And I would be very offended and be defensive of it. Oh, you know, because I'm like, no, I, I I do that. Yeah, I'm, you know, I I, I love God. <laughs> I yeah. Love God. <laughs> did you did you ever think? Well, wait a minute now. If if we go to heaven or hell, why is my grandfather visiting me? Did you ever wonder about that? Yes, like that, wondering. you know, earthbound yeah. spirits yeah. and always a question to me too. I'm like, well, wait a minute, hang on. If we go to one of those two places. Why am I seeing my grandpa? Yeah. Man, and I, and I, I used to always think, well, maybe there's an exception. Maybe some get trapped. Maybe yeah. they died so fast that they didn't right. get over. You know, somehow they got missed. 
you know, yeah, not realizing that God maybe, yeah, is maybe omnipresent. It, yeah, I mean, <laughs> he doesn't some, miss us. Some are so bad they go to hell. Some are really good. They made it, so they go to heaven, and others are still working trying to get there. <laughs> yeah, you know, right, I right. How, I kept reasoning in my mind: Why is there this? Why is there a middle ground in which there's spirits on the planet? You know? Yes. And, yes. And, and I kept coming up with reasons behind it. I think the first time that it hit me, the the first time that it hit me that it was not my grandfather. It wasn't when um, all everything fell apart for me and I was in my living depression and stuff like that, you know, and, and it wasn't when he says, I'm going to have to walk away from you. None of that. It, it, it was when after I was saved, I was saved in 1982. My wife gets pregnant in December of 85. It's around March or April, maybe even June. I can't remember exactly. It was around that time. We, we did not want to know what we were having. We wanted it to be a surprise. So we didn't say, okay, let's find out. So we had no idea. And, but we were just happy that, you know, we're going to have a child. I'm having this dream. And suddenly I'm standing there in this dark spot. And then this these two figures come walking toward me. And it's this, it's my my grandfather. My, grand, this, my grandfather has not appeared to me since I got saved. You know, what's uh -oh. going on? Uh -oh. And I didn't trust him. I didn't trust my grandfather when I saw this. I'm like, something's yeah. not right. And, but he has his <clears throat> hand on this little boy, blonde-haired, blue-eyed boy. And this oh, blonde-haired, no. blue-eyed boy has this sort of like non-expressionable look on his face, just there. And I'm looking at this, and I'm going, and suddenly it dawns on me, that's, that's my son. I'm going to have a boy? And mm. the grandfather, grandfather looks at me and says, we had you. We gave you so many things and you turned us away, but I will have your children. And, he, oh, gosh. and, and then his fingers begin to go into the skull of my son and his countenance begin to change from that of no expression to a look of evil. And I started crying. I said, no, no, no. And I fell to my knees and I said, God, please, no, no, no. And suddenly like, a voice within my voice spoke and says, you have weaponry. You are a child of God. Stand against this right now. And so I stood up and I looked at it and I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, you let go of my son. You let go. You have no right. That's right. And its fingers quickly withdrew. And I said, be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. And suddenly, <laughs> for the first time, the mask of my grandfather ripped away. And it was the most hideous creature. Wow. Standing there screaming. And it just turned and ran. And yeah. I hear this voice like God speaking. And he said, you know, your children will not be responsible for what you had done. That has been broken. They will be responsible for their actions. But yeah. you, my son, must tell them where you came from, what you've been involved with, and how I saved you out of it. Amen. And so I made that promise. And I said, all right, I'll do it. And that's where the book comes in. Because the reason I wrote the book, it started out as a story that all the names were changed. When my first, I got six boys, my first two, when they were old enough, after the second child got saved, after he came to know Christ, he was like eight years old. I began reading books to them, all kinds of good spiritual warfare books and stuff, you know, good, you know, like This Present Darkness by, you know, Frank Peretti and, you know, just really some good books. And finally, yes, they were good. I said, I want to tell you a story. How about this? I want to, for my nighttime bedtime stories, I want to tell you a story. This story is a story of Jason. And so I started telling the story of this little boy named Jason, who how he got involved with witchcraft and and and, then, and all the bad things he did, and how God turned his life around. And then and then he had these two kids, and and they ended up getting saved. And they go, you know, they had no idea because I changed all the names, places, and stuff, because I didn't want them to know it was my story. It was my testimony, but I gave it in that story fashion. With dialogue and everything i hadn't written it yet but i was just saying it and i got done with it and uh they said wow that was a cool story you know how you ended up getting saved and everything you know i said yeah i said 
but I want to tell you something. Uh, and the character's name was Jason. And I said, uh, I know Jason. What? See, that's a true story. <gasps> you know Jason? What's he doing now? I said, he's sitting right here telling you a story. I said, I changed the name. It's your dad. I, that was what I was involved with. And they, wow. they had this look like, oh. but they told me later that it revolutionized their prayer life. They were so thankful that I told them my life because it gave them something to look out for against, you know, to, yes. to be aware that there's a spirit realm and uh, it, it, it changed their lives. And then when the next two got old enough, my two older ones sat in and I told them the story, but the story grew because they grew, you know, so I added to the story, you know, because I always ended my stories with the last one being saved. So I went all the way through the different things that happened all the way to their lives being saved. And then I told them what happened. And then in 2012, my fifth son got old enough to understand. And by this time, I had written a manuscript of my book. I started writing my book. And so I read the story to them. And uh, Thomas was just, you know, he turned to me, he goes, I'm so glad you gave your life to Jesus. <laughs> I said, me too. Amen. Amen. And, and Bless your heart. In 2017, my last son, was old enough to hear the story. He was 11 years old. And by this time, my book had already been published. It was already out there on Amazon. And so all I did was just take what I'd written. And I I took the story from, from all the way back to my grandfather, how he got involved, what he did, and how it affected the family, all the way through all the different scenarios of life, all the way up to my salvation, all the way up to how I raised the kids. You know, of course, it was Jason raising the kids, you know, the, the character. And and all the way up to the last son getting saved, how he got saved, you know. And, and, and it was funny because my son, my last son, he goes, oh, wow, it's cool, Dad. You put that in that story. That's the, that's the way I got saved. I go, yeah, that's cool. I put I put you I, I used your story in here. And he goes, that's awesome. That's cool. You know, that's you know, really it, neat, isn't it? it, it that is so neat. It. The whole thing was all of it. You know, and that's wonderful. My five other boys, they're just cracking up because they know what's coming. Yes. Of course, at the end of the story, uh, I told him. I even wrote it I, in my epilogue. I said, you know, son, you know what you just read is a true. What I've just read to you is a true story. That you know, your father. And and it's on my it's on my it's on Facebook uh, my, when dark pa uh, Facebook when dark paths meet Facebook yes uh, there's videos there's a video of that uh, of of my son my last son uh, uh, hearing me tell him that really he, oh yeah. that is so neat yeah, I gotta yeah. see that that's yeah, neat I actually, on my I'll put it on the Facebook account because I wanted people to see his reaction because he's the last child he's the you know he's the final child yeah. he's eleven he's now almost eighteen years old. And it was funny, oh. a few months ago, he asked me, he said, Dad, he said, you told that story back when I was 11. He said, can I read it again? I want to read the story this time. I said, sure. So I gave him my my book. And he, he he looked at me, he says, Dad, he says, there's so much more in there than just the story. He says, there's so much information on how to come against the enemy. He says, it's a teaching book. He said, I yes. know how much of a teaching book it is and how you surrounded it like a novel, like it was a story with dialogue and, and everything. Amen. Yes. And everything. He said, he said, but that's right. If people read it, they realize, wait a minute, this is how to combat against the enemy. And I said, well, yeah, what is for? I said, I want, I want this story not to just be a testimony. I want it to be a teaching tool for those who um, are either struggling or know someone who's struggling and get information. Yes, it's a novel, and it's uh, but it's a true novel. It's a true story. All names have been changed. Yeah. The reader knows going in at the very beginning of the book. I explained to him the reason for the book is because yeah. God told me to tell my boys of our life. Tell them That's right. everything. And it, and He used Scripture to remind me that when He brought the Israelites out of Egypt, He said, "I want you to tell your children and your grandchildren and their children how I delivered you out of Egypt." Yes, yeah. they forget. And I thought, you know, that's true. If if I tell my boys what I've been through, they will tell their kids what their grandfather had been through and why their life yeah. is different. You know, because if you forget, 
you know, tend to go back into certain things. And, you know, that book can also be passed on to their children. Yeah. You know, exactly. and, yeah. And, the, and another big thing is it's helping other people, you know, because the way you wrote it was for a child to even understand it. Exactly. You know, yeah. so I love that. I yeah, think that's I wonderful, to be, you know. Yeah, I didn't want it to be too wordy of, of words that they wouldn't understand. I wanted it where yeah. a, a teenager or a preteen could understand what had taken place. That's a very good idea. You know, very but, good idea. But even a parent could read it or even someone who's, you know, you know, is older could read it. You yeah. know, that uh, I, I thought about, well, I can make it as a testimony. This is what I did. Uh, this is me, me, what happened to me. But yes. I thought, I think it would be better if I just change the names and just create it like it's a character, like, a, like yeah. it's a, a drama, do a drama. Yeah. Right, you know, right. Because at the time, it took me four, almost five years to write the book because I had to gather all this information from yeah. from other sources because even some of the things that happened in the book, um, yes. you know, I, 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 I don't recall them happening. I had to right. get some information some, from some of my friends because um, now there's some things in which the Lord did bring back to mind, you know, some of my blackouts, you know, to help, I guess, to verify but uh, there's a lot of things that are blank. And I'd had to go to one of my friends. I said, uh, what happened here? And he goes, oh, you you remember this? This is what happened. I'm like, really? Okay. So, you know, and so I, I got their information. Yeah. And I, and I put it into the book. So it took me quite a while. I got information from uh, two of my sisters and my mother and about two or three of my friends. <laughs> That's good. That's yeah. good. You know. It sounds very interesting. I bought the book, but I just, I haven't, I've got to read. I want to read it so bad. I've just <laughs> been, you know, so busy and everything, but I really am. I, I'm, well, I'm going to read that book. I tried my best to make it a small book. I even thought about making it into the, like a three-parter. Yeah. But there's so much uh, information that needed to be said. You know, I thought, well, I can, leave, I can leave some of the outer characters out. But then I realized, well, wait a minute, I can't do that because they're necessary for later on in the book because of what happened in my life. It's like, I have to have the character. I have to have everybody involved. You know, my right. uncle from, from Texas, you know, my yeah. other uncle from Miami, you know, right. You know, right. And, and uh, so, you know, even though the story's not about them, it is sort of about them, you know, yeah. one of them, uh, one of them was an atheist, didn't believe in God later on. I had the privilege of leading him to Christ. I made that part of the story. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. But, uh, That's good. I'm really glad. And I must mention in here that this is your first interview publicly, yeah. you know, it, so yeah. I'm really excited about that. You know, I'm well, really happy. To is, is that, uh, for the longest time, I, I don't want to say I kept the private. It, I, I wrote it for my boys. I published it for maybe just for some friends to be able to, to, to read and yeah. and then I kept it's funny I would see it go back on the back burner and then suddenly I would get somebody who would call me and say hey I um uh, I told so and so about your book uh, they're having some issues and then I'd hear hey um, my daughter she's been you know wanting to go into witchcraft and you know what's the name of your book and so I'm finding it being a useful tool and um, it's like one one of my sons said that. Um, it will, it will, it will come out when God wants it to come out. And I think maybe he's wanting that to happen now, you know, that yeah, it's uh, good. to know um, that there's that's a, good. another world out there, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, that, and uh, this is, and this oh. is not going to be the last that anybody's going to see of you. Right. This because is the way me and you met yeah. was <laughs> Joseph Jordan Yes. Right. And, and we were very blessed that we were asked to be in a documentary together I know. With, so, with Joseph Jordan. Yeah. So, Jordan and Jordan to get our testimonies guy. out there. And I'm, I'm well, just that, thrilled. The about interesting it. thing I like about what, what happened with Joe, Joe Jordan is that, uh, you know, he, he, he's been able to explain UFO phenomenon, you know, with it being very well experience. Too. And he and I had a chance to chat one day and uh, he found out what I had been involved with. And he told me, he says, you know, he said, we, we need to have more testimony of things that are just outside of the UFO phenomenon. He says, because they're all the same, you know, they're interconnected. You know, yes, you have yes. all these issues of, of all these of deceptions, 
abductions, yes. all these things. They and they're now, all the same source. Yes, same yes. source of where it comes from. You know, yes, so. and my grandson just wanted to mention that with him, since we brought that up, was with him. Um, in my testimony, um, you know, we were getting spirits in the house that we thought it was the spirits of dead loved ones or dead people, right. you know, yeah, and my was. husband was getting tormented and everything. Well, then next thing you know, my grandson seen the spirit and he got very upset about it. And I, you know, he was young. He was only like four years old. Wow. Well, then like a couple of years later, we were talking about it or it came up. And I asked him, I said, do you remember what that looked like? Do you remember that? And he said, yeah. And I said, could you draw a picture to show me what it looked like? Because I was just curious of what he's seen. Right. You know, I didn't, I never knew what he actually saw. I knew it was demonic. I know it was yeah. the spirit that was in our house, right. haunting our house. Um, and when he drew it, it looked exactly like what people say. It looks just like a, a, a gray alien. Isn't that something? A gray alien. Yeah. And, you know, oh, thinking okay. back and I'm like, look at the times I've heard Joseph Jordan talk about with people that had these um, experiences where they thought that they were being uh, alien abductions. Yes. And they actually see aliens and dead loved ones. Right. On the spacecraft and stuff. Right. And it's like they pretend to be all this. You know, they really do. Yes, Even Bigfoot. Do. People yes. think that Bigfoot is a real true flesh and blood, <laughs> but it's not. I it's know. actually demonic, right? And it's it's that's why it disappears. They can't yes. catch it. They they say there's DNA out there. It's not. It's deception. They always find it out to be a fraud or fake, yes. or whatever you know. But um, it's it's always that way. But it's just the, all these things are interconnected. They are. And Joseph Jordan was like, you know, I because when I when I you know listen to his testimony, I was like. Wow. I mean, the stuff that, you know, he talks about, it's like, this is stuff that's happened with me, but mine right. was with, you know, earthbound spirits. Yeah. Deception, you know, right. and, and same thing with you with the spiritualism kind of stuff exactly. and your spirit guide was your grandfather. Right. See right there, that's connected. It's so connected. You know, and then these angels, supposedly your, your guardian angel. And then yeah. who is it? Right. What was it? Say the morning star. Morning Whoa, star. Right. it's Lucifer. Yeah. You know, yeah. But oh. it's just all these things are connected, and it's it's right. it's crazy. But you know what? There's never been a documentary like this. This no, is going to no, be I, great. I'm so thrilled to be a you part. Know, of I mean, I know we can't say much. I don't no, know. You know, we, we don't, don't know, know any a yet. lot of this stuff. We just no. know what we told them. Yeah. But so we're, it's going to be awesome. It, 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 the deceit. It's like it's like going to a buffet of deceit. Pick your yes. deceit. Do you want a deceit yes. of being a spiritist, or do you want to be a, have a deceit of UFO? Yep. How about a deceit of, of ghost spiritual hunting? How about, buffet? How about a deceit, yes. a deceit of Bigfoot? How about a deceit? We got all. It's all whatever the, the person is attracted to. Yes, whatever they the pretend to be, and they want to get our focus right. off of off of Jesus yeah. and I, onto them. I can guarantee you that it, had my grandfather been involved with UFO aliens, things like that. That's what I would have been involved with. It yep. would have passed on down to me. I would have been a victim of it yep. myself. I would have been exactly. saying, you're not going to believe this. I was abducted. They dragged yep. me out and they hung me upside down and beat me with rods. It's almost <laughs> the same story, except. Yes. Oh, you're right. I didn't <laughs> you know? think of that. Right. Yes. Yeah, just, just change the, the demonic creatures over to aliens. It's yep. the same thing. You know, yep. they were me, beating me, you know. Yeah. And these spirits so. have also, I've known of people where they actually were pulled out of the beds and stuff and hung up. And yeah. that this was earthbound spirits. Right. See, See all then, uh, it, now, right, exactly. So I'm pulled out. You have some that's been pulled out. We yep. have people who've been abducted by aliens been pulled out. Yes. It, it, yes. It's, it's, it's the same scenario, just, yeah. you know, just same a, thing. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. also, we should mention while we're on here, because it's in, it's just in a week, but they're having that UFO. Um, what's it called? UFO UAP threat or hope oh, conference yeah. by Joseph Jordan. Right. It's going to be over here in Titusville, Florida. And uh, people, I'm going to go ahead and I will put a link underneath this video for people that want to get a ticket to go. Yeah. Um, but it's going to be a really good conference. There you go. There you go. Yeah. And uh, there's, there's going to be a move on. Let's see. Hold on. Let me look at this. There's going to be a couple, some guest speakers. Um, it's going to be Jason December, 
and he's got a test quite a testimony and then there's going to be uh let's see who else is it I, i'm looking at mufon's international director of field investigators he's an author speaker and field investigator um let's see how do i say his name my eyes are really bad sorry guys uh picano mountains so. i'm sorry if i got that wrong but um then they're going to also have guy malone's going to be there he's got yeah. an awesome testimony got a lot of knowledge he's been in a lot of the conferences with joseph i really look forward to meeting guy malone and oh, also yeah. jason december and the other guest speaker yeah. but um and of course joseph jordan he's going to yes. be on there and give yeah, his not, wonderful I, testimony and stuff but this is going to be something to look forward to guy it's a whole day it's it's a day yeah. packed isn't it with some awesome guest speakers and oh, stuff? Oh yes, I'm so looking forward to. We're it. gonna go. I'm gonna go too. We're gonna oh, be yeah. there. Oh, Put I'll bells be on. You there. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Absolutely. We're I'll, definitely we're gonna see each other there. But um, it's something to look forward to, and uh, you know, and and this, like I said, this documentary. Whenever it gets done and tied up, yes, we're gonna look yes. forward to that one. I am but, too. Uh, That's gonna be yep, good. Yep. But anyway, it's been a, quite an interesting um show today. And I hope everybody enjoyed it. And I'm going to leave, ask, ask, I'm going to ask you, what is your contact information for anybody that might want to contact you or, you know, sit, talk uh, to you for. Let's see. Uh, probably uh, the, the best way would be through the uh, Facebook account when dark paths meet. Um, okay. Because I'll get, okay. I see a notification that somebody's, you know, uh, uh, okay. tapped into it and, and all. And uh, that'd be good. And that gives you a chance to see, I, I posted pictures of, some of my uh, sisters and, and all when we were younger, just different family photos and all. And then, of course, the video of uh, my uh, last son um, hearing my story. Well, that's wonderful. <laughs> re revealing uh, who I who I am in that story. Right. Well, can I ask you, I, I forgot to ask this. Um, whatever happened about your sister? Did she ever come to Christ? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah um, in. A year and a half, well, right after that session when I got saved in the pastor's office, we walked out. My my wife was working at a Christian bookstore, and she said, um, I'm going to go tomorrow buy uh, your sister a Bible, and I'm going to have her name imprinted on it, and we're going to pray for her every night. I'm going to leave it under our bed, pray for her every night that she will come to know Christ. And I turned to my wife, and I said, my sister has no idea what's about to hit her. And so yeah, really. we began praying for her and her life spiraled out of control. I mean, it was almost like overnight. Everything started happening. And she tried to seek help from some of her former witch friends. And ironically, they either all moved away or passed away. But the big finale was her mentor, the one that says, you know, he got too close to Jesus. She had gotten saved a year before. <laughs> so she, what? So, oh, whoa! So really? Her mentor told her, "says You got to, you got to try. You got to go. You got to give your life to Jesus." And uh, so my sister had come down here to Florida to talk to me to find out what it was that I had that she didn't, because she said I seemed to have it all together, and she said, "But her world is falling apart." And she went to church with me oh, that awesome. night and she gave her life to Christ. Praise God. I was and, so worried about that. <laughs> you that's know good. Funny? Here's the irony of all ironies. Here she was breaking up families, breaking up homes, breaking up marriages. Do you know what she is? She's a Christian counselor, family counselor. Really? She helps bring families together. Oh, good. Good. <laughs> so, so she, she, yeah, she's, uh, she works with children of broken homes and stuff, and helps them uh, to, to oh, um, uh, go through go through the trauma that they've gone through. She's yeah. uh, she's sold out to Jesus, loves the Lord. Praise God! And, uh, wow, yeah, that's so, good. Yeah, uh, that's you know, so good. I, I, I'm I love to hear that. that way. Yeah. And Me too. Me and, too. And, and that's one of the reasons why in the book. See, a lot of times, and I don't mean this as a bad thing. Some people will write or give a testimony. I did horrible things and then I got saved. But in my book, I did I did horrible things, got saved, and watched other people get saved, and then and then all of us were being used by the Lord to do other things, and we went down. So the testimony continues. So yes, you know, you know these 
so so many years of darkness and then so many years of the cleansing. That's process. good. That's good. And, you you know, don't see that often. Yeah, I didn't want it to just stop at salvation. I, you know, I give yeah, I give yeah. details of what happened in my sister's life after her salvation. I give details of what happened in my life after salvation and the confrontations I still had to go through. And, yes. and, and for this continual cleansing process that I had to go through for several years, and, you know, and, 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 but that, and that is the irony is that I found that um, many people who've read the book say that helped them because they kept living with guilt for something they did years ago. And this helped them get over it because they understood that it is a cleansing process after salvation, you know? And um, that, so uh, I'm finding that evidently that must have been the way the Lord wanted me to write it, you know, and and not make it a two-parter. I didn't want somebody to read the first book and then go purchase the second book. It needed to be all in one book. That's good. That's good. I can't wait to, I can't wait to read it. Oh. I'm, I, you know, like I said, I really want to read that. I got, I've got to, I got it in my Kindle. That's what I have. Oh, that's that's what one I of these, use. One of these days it will be out in paper, but uh, book. And yeah. then, matter of fact, I think, uh, uh, Joseph Jordan is uh, actually uh, uh, working toward that to help me get it in uh, into actual hold it in your Bigger hand print. Hands. Good, yeah. awesome, awesome. That's good. That's good. Uh, has he got a chance to read it? You know, I haven't had a chance to ask him. We're so busy oh, okay. now. You know, yeah, he does yeah. have it. I, I sent him the manuscript and everything, and good. so that he could send it to some people to see if they can get it. Uh, to be uh, yeah. brought the paperback, you know. Oh, but, good. Uh, well, I'm going to include it in the in the in your or underneath the video. I'm going to include the link to your book. Oh, that way, people you. can you, you know get a chance to get that, that and find it. Yeah. So that would be wonderful. So oh, that, it's that, been that, really good interview. I tell you, it's been well, very the interesting. first one. I wrote the book ten years ago, and now that's here it is. News. <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. That's right. Well, I want to thank you. Thank oh. you so much for coming on. Well, I, you know, I, I really appreciate it. it. It's yeah. been very interesting. You yeah. know, good talk. Indeed. And it's not the end of this. We've got, we got other work to do, don't we, for the Absolutely. kingdom. We're just really getting started. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Well, anyway, I God bless you. And well, God bless you. Have you. A good night, and okay? and I'll, be, I'll be praying for you. I'll be praying for you. You know, you. you know, the enemy doesn't want this uh, to be... Uh, let oh, out. yeah, really. We certainly had a lot happen, didn't we, before yeah. this started. Yeah. My laptop went black. It didn't yeah. come back. It, it was on, but it wasn't working. The whole the picture went black. That was it. And then after that, my microphone went out. I had yeah. to go to the store, get a microphone. And then I come back, my emails wouldn't work because now I'm on a laptop. Yeah. So I, I mean, had to get another, I had to try to get in my emails. I couldn't do it to send you the link to get started. Yes. It was just, we was over an hour late getting yeah, started. Yeah, we were supposed to everything to early. And uh, people it, would say, oh, that's not the enemy. I'm sorry. But yes, it was. <laughs> it was. <laughs> you know, we started praying. Everything happens and it, you yeah. know, it ends up happening. So. Yeah. But yeah, I know, I don't believe that everything's the enemy. I don't, you know, no, I, I know that like you said before, you know, if the car, you know, you don't upkeep your car, your car or your tires, your tires going to go flat eventually. You know, right, it's not, not always the, the devil. <laughs> right. Right. But yeah, yeah. We this, had a lot on of the, on this particular <laughs> case, usually when it comes to electronics, eh, it's probably the enemy. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's right. That's yeah. right. So, well, God bless like, you, Donnie. Oh, I really you too, appreciate Jenny. your you time. Too. God bless you. you too. God bless you. I'll talk to you later. Okay. All right. Bye-bye.